Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Affinity Photo's medium blur. I have to say medium, medium blur. However, get it there right? There's the blur itself, medium blur. So I'm just going to cancel that. You've got to see this image here. Now it's got quite a lot of lines, streaks all the way through it. Now it's available, this filter, in filters. And it's also available via the layer menu as well. That's a non-destructive effect. This one's a destructive effect. What you can do, just go down to filters and blur, and you'll find it just down here, medium blur. Or you say medium blur. Anyway, so you've got the radius there. You can set it very low, and if you get low, you can hardly notice any difference. It's actually quite useful if you've got some noise in the image. I'll do that in a sec. But say, if you've got like four or five, whatever, hardly seeing difference, but as soon as you get further up, and also what happens, you see the color there. So if I go back, you see these lines here. And also you can control it here. Just about make those lines out now, but you can still see those solid colors just there. And that's what it does, it works with color. So you can see that still, even though you're blurring it, you've still got a nice edge there of that color, but still blurred. And you can push it up to quite high, and even really quite high, you can still see the image, but still, there's still a bit of sharpness there where you've got that strong color. You can also modify it here by, you can see if I just hover there, the cursor, just over the yellow, you can see that, oh, just there. And you can see a little bar that's on the, and you can go backwards and forwards, you can just modify it there. So you can just, and you can push it quite maximum. You can really, really, <laughs> to the point where you actually push it, Beyond that's like at 470. So you're really sort of completely there. It's you, you can still make it out. And you've still now the purples, which obviously were dominant, have suddenly completely enclosed the entire image, which you may or may not want. But you can only go up to 100 with there, but you can go type in like 400 or 500 there. And you can also, as I say, just use it by using this control just going across the screen. That might be just as easy as well. So what you can also do, and I'm just going to quickly go to filters, noise, and just quickly add some noise in it, because I haven't got, don't think there's much noise in there. I'll just quickly add some noise. You can see a bit of noise added there. Click apply. So then go back to filters and go to blur, medium blur, and okay, set it fairly low. Obviously not as low as that, but maybe five or six. And you actually start seeing the noise vanish. You still got the basic structure of what was there before. It just removes that noise effect. I mean, there's a slight bit of, maybe a bit further. I mean, obviously it's not as good as without the noise, obviously. But you can remove the noise a bit. Supposedly that's what it's for. I must admit, I have not used it for that. I use it generally for creating some unusual blurring effects. But that's a possibility. Now, what you can do with, of course, the blur, you can use it on layers. So what you can do is just go to layer menu and you can duplicate the current layer. So you've got to see there, two layers there. And you can go there, and what you do, you can go filters, and you can apply the blur and medium blur again. You can see you can apply nice blur there, and you get this nice effect around the edge. It's sort of nice smooth edge, which I think is quite nice. And of course you can duplicate that design as well. But also another thing you can do, if you duplicate this design, I'm just gonna, so you've got the two layers. What you can do of course is you can go to filters, go to blur, and you can go to medium. Just apply that fairly thing, apply. So you've got that design there. But what you can do, you can go over to layers, and if you can't see that, go to view, and studio, and layers. Now what you can do, you can use blending modes, so you can say dark and instead multiply. So you can create some very interesting, slightly unusually blurred designs there. And of course you can go through lighten, screen, overlay, difference, and difference creates quite a nice difference edge sort of things, like one of the ones in Photoshop, you've got that uh, filter effect there. So you can see the blurring, but you've still got those lovely little strands there. And I think that's quite a nice effect because what you can do, of course, you can always, in this, you can always go to a layer and then you can merge visible. So you end up with that layer, that pixel layer. And of course, then you can manipulate it further, go to filters, 
auto levels maybe and you can see then you can just boost that up and you've got very nice colorful design there which of course you can manipulate further apply other effects and distort it of course maybe distort and deform uh, so you can create some very interesting line designs very quick and easy using that lovely streaks of color that you've got from that image just purely by using those two layers with that slight blurring to create that nice line oh i'm just going to remove that so back to this completely original the design what you can also do of course with all the filters you can apply the effect so go to filters and i'm just going to go to, to I would go to distort i meant down to blur medium and do that and you can also go to apply and then go to a layer and fade so if you want to fade it slightly so you don't get the full you get sort of like a ghostly look quite easily with this sort of set it to 50 percent. i think 50 percent is really quite nice for that you can also of course go there but just 50 percent. and also what you can also do you can always use blending modes as well to create some actually quite a nice sort of painted look effect there lighten screen overlay difference and so on you can go through those and try them out of course well that's quite a nice one that's quite an unusual nice embossing but you still instead of the usual embot sort of uh, effect the gray it normally goes completely gray however this you've actually got the nice color that you can see as well and all the nice lines which all come out because of this this blur okay so just go back to the original image you can also use of course good old just going to go to view and studio and channels my favorite i always love using channels channels are great now i don't know if some filters do <laughs> fail to work in the channels some probably do but so uh, this one i'm quite certain if i go to composite red so you can see that's selected now and you've got that is active that's the red channel what you can do you can go to filters and you go to blur medium again and you apply it with different settings so apply there and you can of course go to the green you don't have to of course or blue you don't have to either and you can just go back to the thing and you've got the design there and again if you want you think oh you know what i will go for filters blur medium blur and you can obviously push it up to the max and now i don't know if it's, oh, it goes up to about 900 so you can apply that so you've got your blur there and now of course it's going to process it <laughs> take some time that was quite a high blur Maybe that was not a great idea in terms of applying it so high. So you've got that, and then you of course can push that, and you can see you can create some very unusual looking by blurring parts of it and not blurring parts of it. So uh, that's useful. So now let's just undo that. And I'm just gonna go back to the original. All the channels are active, get rid of it now. Quite often I forget and I end up still having the red channel. I'm thinking, this is weird. It's not working the way that I think it should. Well, you can also use, just going to go over here, two shapes as well. Obviously, it doesn't have to be an image like this. You can go to a shape. Let's go for like a star or something. So there's a star design. I'm just going to, maybe not white. I'm going to go for, say, red. And then you can apply the blur there as well. So if you want to, filters and go down to blur obviously medium blur and it virtually disappears but you can also get a nice rounding effect that's quite nice it just sort of nicely rounds that blur so instead of being super sharp you've got that nice blur now and you of course can go down and virtually reduce it to nothing and still move backwards and forwards if you want until you're happy with that yeah click apply and you've got that nicely rounded design so it rounds shapes very nicely so of course if you've got a rounded design circle or something it's probably going to just make the circle disappear and also what you can do you can also use text now i normally i'm just going to go for frame text let's just get rid of that for a second i'm just going to quickly add some there and text and insert some filler text you've got some filler text there which you can hardly see my apologies however what you can do of course you can use exactly the same thing filter blur medium blur and of course the high settings going to completely wipe it out but you can see what happens is you can see the type there and you can get sort of really broken sort of type like that might work also best if i actually recolor it 
select some of the text and recut. But anyway, you can blur that as well. And it's quite useful for all kinds of so filters, blur, medium. Let's just try a bit. Yeah. So you can make it virtually com actually it's completely unreadable, but it's still you've got this general sort of structure there of the writing, which you can make out just about if you really look at it, apply. And of course you can always apply it again to completely destroy it. And you can always do that with anything, with the shapes, with the images as well. Now I'm just going to go to another image because I've got this image where I've got some very strong, obviously, black around the edge because this works with blurring colour more than the black. So uh, what I can do, go to filters, blur, and I wanted to show you an example of this. So medium blur. Now this is for the whole, everything here. It's all been put into a pixel layer. These were originally shapes, but I've just made them into a, merged them into a layer, a single pixel layer. And what you can do, you can see as I do that, it all sort of becomes sort of smudges, falls into each other. So you can sort of like melt them together, which is quite nice, quite a nice effect. If you, you can see again the round in there. So it sort of nicely rounds and sort of you get chunks of colour. And of course, if I recolored bits of it, you would see it probably even better. So click apply there. And of course, you can always apply it a couple of times, repeat, and you can see you can blur it more and more to create some very unusual, very unusual designs. So now I'm just going to go back to the original design, remove that, and I'm going to bring back that original image there. Because what you can also do, these have all been destructive effects. They, I mean, you can, of course, undo. You can always go back, but they're destructive effects. What you can do, you can also use good old layer menu and new light filter layer and blur. And where is it this time? <laughs> yeah. Now, this, this is the thing that always gets me, and this is one thing that does always slightly bug. I don't know why the order is different. On the other one, the medium blur is right down the bottom of the list. Here, it's the third one. There's no logic to it. Why don't they put it in alphabetical order or keep some sort of consistent order? Seems to like a mind of its own. Gaussian blur top, medium blur is now third. So you might go down the bottom looking for that. Nope, it's there. So medium blur. Now the thing is, of course, with medium blur, now you can apply your blur. And again, you get exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same. But this time, of course, you'll notice what you end up, you get a quite an interesting circle design. If you push it really quite extreme, I've gone for like, Let's go for it. No, I'm not going to go further, otherwise I'll just... But you see the layer sort of come, falls in. Obviously, I've, with 100, it's not so bad. But if you use the sort of that cursor, you can actually push it. So you can just go there and you can see the colour sort of all smudging. Some more intense than others. And, it, and that's, I think it's quite, that's a really quite nice effect, the way it does that. Well, also what you can do, of course, you, of course, can do this with two layers. You can create combinations and all those sorts of things. But what you've got, you've got blend mode. So you can run through these things and you've got linear burn, color dodge screen to create some very nice things. You can also change, of course, the radius still. It's still, you can see it's sort of blurring a ghostly kind of effect instead of, and obviously slightly brighter as well. And you can change the opacity of it as well if you don't want it full on. But you can put it up to 100%, keep it that. And of course, what you can see over here, you've got background, and this medium blur is attached to this layer. So if you had other layers, and I haven't, of course, but if I had, so if I just remove that, go back to that, and I say, hold down the alter option key and duplicate. There's all duplicate. Just want to do that for some weird reason. Okay, it's not going to let me do it, so. Layer menu and duplicate. That's the easy way. If it never lets you want to duplicate, you can duplicate by that. So seems to be an odd feature. Don't know why you just can't duplicate the layer like that, but obviously you can't. I always think you can, but I'm trouble is quite often what I do, I end up using Photoshop a lot, and Photoshop you do it, and then you come to Finity Photos and you think, oh yes, I can do that. And then of course you can't in the middle of a tutorial, you think, hmm. But you can do it if you've got a layer. Like that. So what's the difference personally? I, I so you can duplicate layers now, but you can't duplicate it when it's just the first layer. Strange. However, 
with multiple layers, and it only needs one, of course, but you've got this thing. You can, of course, now see if I go to a layer, new life filter layer, and I apply it. Obviously, I'm selecting that layer. That's the key thing. I'm selecting that layer. I can go to blur again, or any of the other filters, of course. Go to, going down the bottom, medium blur. And then, of course, I can change radius. And you can see, of course, you still get this lovely edge. Like that. And you can still, of course, use the blending modes and that sort of thing. But now, close that. And if you want to change it, of course, but it's only applied to that layer. That one there. So you can see that effect there. And you can see all the others are untouched. And you can always move it. You can always select it. So you decide, you know what, I don't want it to be applied to that layer. What you can do, you can just drag down, drag it to there, and then it's applied to that layer instead. Or you can drag it down, or you can drag it above. Just there, and you can see it just highlights as it goes over there, and it will be applied to everything below. So everything below has now been affected by that medium blur. Now I just realized one thing I'm just gonna do, let's just get rid of that now. Just get rid of all those. Last thing I didn't, last thing I didn't do, I didn't do a selection. So you can also use it with selections. So just go over here, elliptical marquee tool. So I'm just gonna quickly add it. Now you of course could select, and it's a nice way of doing it, but I'm just gonna quickly do select there. You could use these as well, and I'm just gonna do that. But I just wanna to go to filters, then obviously blur, medium blur, like I say, it's just down the bottom now instead of up at the top. You can see you apply it, and you can see it's just within that range, which is great. So obviously all the rest untouched, which is always quite nice. However, of course, you can use see other tools as well to select, but you can do selection, maybe tonal. You can go for select shadows or select highlights. So you can select highlights like that. So they're all selected. See the bright highlights there. Then, of course, what you can do, you can always go to the filters and go to blur and medium blur and apply the blur just to those. All the rest of the stuff completely untouched. Apply. Or, of course, you can do it the other way around. You can always go select and you can invert the pixel selection. So you've got it selecting everything outside those areas and then do exactly the same. Repeat medium blur. And you can see then you get these islands of thing. And of course, you've got feathering as well if you want to add feathering into it to make it a little bit smoother than that. But you can create some nice chunks of solid color in this sort of bright, the highlights. So you can see the highlights. The rest of the image is, of course, blurred out. But again, probably feathering would help and other effects that you could create maybe a slightly better image than this, but it's still a useful way of using selections with this filter. So there are lots of things you can do with the medium filter. It's not just a one effect, sort of bang, applied. It can be used in multiple ways. And of course, you can combine it with lots of other things. You've always got good old, and I, my, I don't do often tutorials about it, but there are some tutorials on the, the Graphic Extras channel. You've got Studio and you've got Macro. You always create a macro, which you can then run through, apply it each and every time with combinations of different effects to build up quite an interesting design in with any kind of image. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always had new tutorials about Photoshop, Finity Photo, Finity Designer, Publisher. Oh, and if you've got Finity Publisher and Designer and you've got this as well, you of course can use it by the personas, which is a super useful feature. Really great that you can combine the apps in such a brilliant way. I love that. Also, of course, other applications as well. If you've got any questions, please put some uh, comments. Always appreciated. Just, uh, you know, so if you've got like, or something I didn't do right, please let me know. Always appreciated. And also, dislike or like. That's always great as well. Thank you much.